Koska. Welcome to Real Hours with uh, PJ and Nate. I'm Nate, and I've got Peter here with me, and I've also got Greg here with me. Give me a shout, boys. Hello. Bonjour. How's bon, it going? Bonjour. Hello, hello. Happy to be here. We are happy to be with you today. We are so excited about this week's podcast. This is season two, episode three, and our What's second that? episode with producer Greg. We felt pretty good about the first one. He ended up making us have our longest podcast ever, but it's okay. He deserves to be a part of the hour and 25 minute mark. Thank you. But yes, we, we are so excited to be here today. We've got some great content this week. We've got WWWS coming. I don't know if I just said too many W's, but it's okay. <laughs> That's fine. And, and we've got lots of other things coming. We're even going to talk a little bit about our little the, the stock market. That's some exciting uh, revelations that's happened. Yes, because... I am a people. finance guru. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter, start us off. Where can people find us? Well, we're very thankful for all of you for listening and tuning in. Just to echo Nate's um, message there. You can follow us at Real Hours Pod wherever you want. Uh, not TikTok and not Snapchat. That's just too young for all of us. We're, we're past that. So yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> we're, we're not young we enough don't for do that. The we don't understand it. Yeah. So. Yes, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Real Hours Pod. Hit us up, uh, follow us. And I mentioned last episode, um, we're busy with school, but at some point there will be a Discord coming, a public Discord for all of you to join. And maybe we'll live stream episodes. Maybe we'll play games with you, like online. Who knows what we'll do? And send us an email at realhourspod at gmail.com. Send us spam, please. Send us spam. That's, that's yeah. what we want. We want the spam. The other thing I want to bring up is that. Uh, we followed up last week's amazing numbers of downloads and listens with another pretty good week. Could be better, but pretty good week. So we're very glad for all of you for tuning in. Thank you. And yeah. um, Greg, I Share believe... our content. Tell your friends. Oh, yeah, please. By all means, like, get out there. Share it. And uh, I actually, guys, I didn't tell you this, but um, this week I did some research into stickers for the podcast. Oh, and, yeah. Um, I have some samples that are in the mail on the way to me right now. So nice. um, So that way we can decide what kind of stickers we want. So hopefully we will have some merch up and running soon. Who did we say we were going to give stickers to? We we're going to give somebody stickers. I if, think it was you, if you email us, if you reach out, if you do yeah. whatever, maybe yeah. we'll send you a sticker. So I know that we have listeners in like in, in Europe and in the United States and stuff. So it'd be really cool. If we could send you something, I'm sure you'd love to rep that on the back of your laptop or water bottle or whatever. <laughs> Producer yeah. Greg, take That's us me. into our first new segment of the day. All right. Well, uh, as Peter said, uh, we have a new segment. Um, and there's lots of weird stuff going on in the world right now. A lot of negativity rampant in um, the news and whatnot. So it being um, Bell Let's Talk Day, just uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday they raised yeah. almost eight million dollars for mental health issues in canada so that's that's awesome, awesome. that's it was pretty good awesome. i forget how many interactions they had but it, they set a record so it's it's awesome that's great yeah so it's gonna be a tough few months until we get to the summer again so just make sure that you check in with your loved ones friends and family um and that's basically what this new segment is we're just doing a weekly check-in uh just talking with the boys seeing what's going up and uh talking with the boys you might just, you might call it real hours. Real, real hours. hours. Exactly. Getting personal. Just, just share something positive or negative, but just be real. We're checking in with our friends because that's important. And we're friends, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Bless up. Okay. So I will start us off. So um, what what are we doing? Are we sharing like a little tidbit or something or personal detail or Yeah, just something that happened in the past week that you want to share um, personal life, you know, we're talking, we're, we're the boys and we're talking. So <laughs> we're the boys and we're talking. He says, exactly. That's the segment. We're the boys and we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our podcast is. Yep. Basically. Yeah, exactly. 
So I'll start us off. Um, so this week, um, I finished a book that I was working on. Um, Ooh. As I was telling you guys, I am a big fan of the Tolkien books. So I finished the one that I was working on, Unfinished Tales. Um, the tales are now finished because I read them. Um, and then also I invested in a good pair of wiper blades for my entire driving life. I've had ah. just crappy wiper blades that have just like jumped over the windshield all day long and made a Classic. bunch of racket. So and have been super special. streaky. And driving driving to Ormokto every day on the highway when it's snowy can be a little oh, dicey, hang especially on. with was that a detail about your secret internship? Yes. Oh, but okay. That's it. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> um, Detective Pete. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a little dicey, especially when the, the wiper blades are a little bit streaky. So having some good ones on there is really, I feel a lot safer. That's good. It's good to be safe and to practice. I, I, that's a, you know what? That, I think that's an underappreciated uh, self-care thing you did for yourself. People Thank are you. all in on self-care and like, you know, take a bath, like put on a face mask, that kind of thing. Hey, get yourself some good windshield wipers. That's that's self-care <laughs> exactly. if I ever heard it. Exactly. We really, we really stress self-care. Like I'm big on the, when I talk about the face wash, <laughs> the men need to have a face routine. I have a good, Absolutely. I actually yeah. have a, a like an exfoliator and, and, that's yeah. so good. It's peppermint. It makes my fin that <laughs> makes my skin so soft in my face. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, still haven't figured out how to grow facial hair, but uh, Greg's with me on that one. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a luxury not all men have. Exactly. Oh well. That's right. All well, right. hey, do you know we have we have more snow in the forecast, Greg? So it's a good thing that you got wiper blades. We have 10 to 15 centimeters coming on Tuesday, so I'm pumped exactly. for that actually because it's been I a light snow. snow year so far, I think. Yeah. Get um, on the snow train. Amen. So, so my uh, my weekly check in, where the boys were talking, item, whatever, is um, I've I had this on the last week's pod script that we wanted to talk about, it, but we ran out of time. Um, is called NBA Top Shot. So it's basically online trading cards, and I I don't want to explain too much because it would take forever. But um, basically, you can buy cards of packs online, packs of cards, not cards of packs, packs of cards. And I did this week. I bought a $14 pack and I actually pulled a card that's worth about 350 American dollars. So that's sick. And I'll be selling it. Um, hopefully. Anyway, that was just a good thing that happened to me. Um, and the other thing that is good that is coming up is snow. So that's that. Um, Nate, what's your we're the boys and we're talking thing? My we're the boys and we're talking thing would have to be um i'm you know as we all know i'm a biology student so i'm in my biology courses this semester at university and uh i i'm getting i'm in a class i'm in a class called immunology and it's basically just the study of um the body and its immune systems and how we fight vaccine or sorry how we fight viruses and bacterial infections and any p pathogen that enters the body and um it's currently kicking my butt <laughs> it is uh it is tough it is we had a quiz today and it kicked my butt i did pretty well on the first one but it was quite easy compared to this one so yeah that that's kind of my weekly check-in thing I, I enjoy the course I, I like the prof and I think the content's good and I think it's but it's definitely something I'm not as interested in is it as interested in it as usual because uh, as many may know I prefer not I don't actually any biology for me is like anything outside of act or human like human interaction on an ecosystem Plants human interaction kind of. on an yeah I'm not really into our systems and stuff like that so sometimes i'm like eh i'm not really going to use this but it is really interesting and i do use it in my i i learned i've already learned a lot enough to understand certain things and certain patterns especially in a time like this where there are people out there that think they know more than the professionals and at the end of the day they don't and <laughs> they should really listen to the people who spend their life career doing these things and 
If they want to take immunology with me, they can. Trust me, they don't want to. I so. tell you, there, there's people like that in every field. Yep. But um, we're not here to spread negativity. No. no. So. No. Okay. So we'll move on from weekly check-in. We're going to hit up WWWS Weird, Wild, and Wacky Stories. <laughs> we just smooth and right into that. So we've got this revamped. So basically, we got weird stories, and we ask questions, and the other the other two answer. So let's get right into this. I don't know who's first, so take it away, whoever's first. first. All right, I'm gonna go first. We got some rock talk. I think that uh, like the geologists in us are all gonna come out here. The archaeologists, the geologists, that kind of thing. Um, the first one's quite interesting. We have a. This is. I'm not even have a question for this. I have two stories I have to do with rocks. I want to see if I can screen share here because I want to show this lovely image uh, that I found this week. I'm just trying to stall while I can pull up the screen share. Here it is. Of these two rocks that were cut open and look just like Cookie Monster. Um, They were found uh, in Brazil by a geologist in November 2020. And apparently they're quite valuable. I'm not sure how much they're worth. Okay. Okay. Uh, he was proposed over ten thousand dollars by five different buyers, so maybe you wow. can start up a little bidding war there. That's pretty cool. Um, but I just thought that that was an interesting thing. Remember when we all had rock collections when we were a kid? I I wish I think that we all wish we could have found a Cookie Monster rock. Um, did you guys have rock collections? No, I think I had like a couple, but I, think I didn't. Me too, have like but I was like, I didn't want to bring rocks in the house. I was actually not like into bringing dirty things into the house. Just so I had like garden. cool rocks and I would like clean them outside and bring them in. <laughs> yeah. I never really had a rock collection. Not that I can remember. I probably did at one point. I probably had something, but I think every kid much. like has one because they like hear about it. Like everybody's like, oh, don't you have a rock collection? Like no kid thinks about that organically, but adults <laughs> think that kids think about that. So that's how like it gets instilled in them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next story. Is uh, 350 million year old rocks mistaken for a suspicious package at Cape Breton University? So um, there was a reusable green Sobeys bag. So the Sobeys is a supermarket here in in Atlantic Canada, and there was uh, some limestone rocks with fossils and stuff left in them, like in the Sobeys bag um, at the university in Cape Breton uh, on the like in front of the door for uh, President David Dingwall's. Um, office and so obviously somebody thought that this is a very suspicious package because if you look at the picture here um let me let me share screen again it basically says attention david dingwall and it just if you look at it here this is like that looks very suspicious if you (laughs) ask me and especially on a university like i don't know after um after the insurrection that happened in the united states everybody like is a little bit on edge i think it's fair to say so um, this led me, and, and it was it just turned out to be harmless harmless fossils that somebody wanted to leave, um, and so the security found them from the university, took them to a geology professor, and asked if they were in fact just fossils or whatever, and he said, yeah, they're just fossils, and they're nothing that special, but they are interesting, like a research piece for the university. So, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> um, I don't so, think any like no matter how interesting or important you think these rocks are i don't think any anything requires you to write attention i'm just yeah. <laughs> begging or for just trouble. not knock on the door and actually hand yeah them that's them. well i feel like he wasn't around or whatever but you could have just like i don't know well, like, he has like an office like yeah. he has a person that he's got to have handles. an assistant or a secretary or something president yeah. of a university even a small university like that um yeah the other thing is, um, like, why wouldn't you just go through the official channels? They they still don't know who gave these rocks to him. There was no signature, no note, no anything. So they're interesting rocks, apparently. The geologist professor said. The geology professor said. So um, this led me to ask. This is my question. What is something? That, this is a very vague question. Sorry for interrupting myself again. What is something you would leave for someone that might be taken as a suspicious slash threatening package? Um, it's very vague. I left it that way intentionally because I just wanted to see what kind of answers I could command from you. But, um, Greg, I see you have an answer written in, so why don't you take a swing at it? Yeah, so um, this immediately popped in my head, and I'm going to share my screen here if I can. There we go. Yeah, so it's 
an episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and basically the art department decided to use a just a normal everyday CPU cooler um, <laughs> to represent a bomb, I guess. <laughs> Uh, a very dangerous alien explosive. Sorry. Um, and I mean, if you don't know what it is, it looks suspicious. And it looks yeah. Especially dangerous. the lighting behind it adds to it, I think. Yeah. But us PC nerds, really cool. um, I mean, it's just <laughs> it's just a, an, an air cooler for your CPU. It's It's harmless. So I think that, if quick. anything were to be sketchy that is just not supposed to be sketchy it would be that a cpu cooler nate do you have something that would be suspicious i d i can't i've struggled with this one i don't really think i think i watch too many shows where somebody leaves a suspicious package so B border security maybe oh yeah i have it stuck in my head what a suspicious package looked like so it's like it definitely isn't a green bag. I'm just saying, like, it's always, like, a briefcase or it's always, like, a suitcase, a very specific color. Like, it's always a very neutral, like, black or brown. Like, mm -hmm. But do you know what, though? Um, like, a suspicious a suspicious package doesn't have to be. Like, I think what obviously comes to mind is a bomb. But it doesn't have to be a bomb. It could be okay, so poison. If, like it, right? it, could, left, it could be something. Yeah. It could be something. What if like... I left uh, some special brownies? <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the commercial um, for? What if, I, what if I left special brownies outside the president of UMB's office? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's. I don't think that stuff's allowed on campus. I think that stuff's banned from campus. I think just put right. uh, tin foil over it and then write in Sharpie on <laughs> the tin foil. Attention, attention. <laughs> uh, I can't even remember. What Paul Mazzaro. Paul. Yeah. That's funny. Um, but a suspicious package could also be poison. Like it could be. Have you guys yeah, heard that's... about the Russian opposition leader Alexei? Yeah. I forget his last name. It's an N. It yeah. The N. But he was poisoned. Um, I think they put a substance in his underwear somehow and that's how he ended up in a coma but yeah like you could make you there's all kinds of dangerous things out there i guess so you yeah, never know what's suspicious and that, what's that's not. very true that's very true Doesn't it, it be could be anything yes. i think that i think that is a great idea though giving somebody some special brownies <laughs> okay nate do you have a uh do you have a yes. story for us so my story i was i was filing through on the internet again and um uh, this one was, it is from today. So it's, it's very recent. recent. Yes. Yes. So the story comes from something that was a little bit of go. Uh, so everyone remembers the TikTok fellow there. Uh, his name's Nathan, who was on his longboard and he was uh, sipping orange or sorry, ocean spray. Cranberry uh, juice. Cranberry juice, the cran cranberry or whatever it's called. And listening to Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Have you guys seen that? You've seen that? I didn't get it. Like I didn't understand why it was so like funny. Like I, I drink from the I drink from the carton all the time. It, it was more the fact that he's just like super chill and he was like living his best best life singing Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Anyways, so basically in Idaho, that's where the fella's from and th that's where he made this um TikTok. He his he has signed a ocean spray cranberries bottle and it is being put into a museum. So <laughs> why I thought I thought this was pretty funny and somebody that worked for the museum basically he was like we think of it only being uh, full of old things, but history is what happened even moments of go uh, ago, he said. And we are really trying to celebrate the recent past of our community. So that's what the it says the mu museum curator said. Carrie Anderson Athe is, is the name. Hmm. I just thought it was very different. And I agree. It's kind of cool to put something like super recent in a in a museum, but I thought it. It was funny. So it's going in a Idaho museum. So basically, my question is: Is that like the most exciting thing going on in Idaho? Is that like why they have to probably. Put it, in a museum? <laughs> it's, it probably is. So no disrespect to is, Idaho. If you, I'm sorry. No disrespect, but like I, I just know nothing about Idaho. 
And I would assume you would say the same thing about New Brunswick. So go ahead. Nick. Yeah. Uh, if you could see one obscure thing end up in a museum, what would it be? And not necessarily like go visit it. Like if you could put something in a museum or like you could see or what, you know what I mean? So um, what do you think? If, if I could put something in a museum, I was just thinking about this. It'd be really cool to have a full scale replica of uh Nate, your your parents' basement where we first started recording real hours, and then yeah. in my basement here too, where we've done it before, and yeah. wax figurines of ourselves. Um <laughs> Greg, we would have we would have you, but we'd have you like in the computer. I think that'd be really cool if you could be like right. I don't know. You could do some kind of cool contemporary art, like <laughs> abstract kind of stuff. And I'm just throwing around art words. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. But um, just to show where the Real Hours podcast started. Like, someday what's when we're a, rich and famous. What's a museum around here that we could pitch this to? The New Brunswick Museum? Well, that's in St. John. I was just thinking the specifically in Frederick. Canadian Sport, or the, 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 Frederick, the Sports New Brunswick Hall Sports Hall of Fame. The New yeah. Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame, yeah. since we actually <laughs> talk about sports on here that much. Have eh? you Have you been in there before? Yes, I've gone on. I've never been in there. What's it like? I used to have classes in there. Really? It's not much. Yeah. Yeah. My parents always told me it was never worth going when I asked because they were like, it's not worth going. I mean, there was a couple cool things. Yeah, there's a couple like exhibits or displays or whatever that you can like do the thing where you hold the the bike wheel and turn it and you spin around on the. That's Science East, isn't it? I mean, I think they have one there too, but they have one at the Sports Hall of Fame for whatever reason. Hmm. Yeah, who I think the, there's like a vertical the best jump thing. New Brunswick athletes of all time. Uh, well, Willie O'Ree, class- Jake Allen, and Matt Stairs. Matt, Matt Stairs. Stairs. Matt Stairs is actually probably the best. Yeah, he won a world. Willie O'Ree for his influence is probably yeah. bigger. His importance is probably more. But like pure, who was best at their sport? I think it'd probably be Matt Stairs. There's a few CFLers. Yeah. Yeah, there was a guy that lived up in Jake Douglas Thomas. too. Yeah, I yeah. honestly, it's not not that exciting. But that's those people are mostly Frederick people. I'm sure there's really cool like that's lawn true, bowling yeah. people from somewhere or something. <laughs> Greg, is what would you put in the uh, the museum? Yeah, so I was talking to my wife about this, uh, Michelle. My wife. And I asked her the question, <laughs> and all she did was whisper in my ear, "My baby teeth." Um, so whatever, Um, (laughs) but that gave me the idea, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I had a protrusion sticking out of like, right here, the palate of my mouth. And so I went to the dentist to go get it checked out and I had an extra tooth growing in the palate of my mouth. So I had to get surgery, uh, to get it removed. And when they took it out. Like, it was only, like, a little tiny, like, smaller than the tip of your tooth piece was sticking out. But when they took it out, it was, like, the root of it was the size of a root of a normal tooth. I was just blown away by how big this thing was. Do you still have it? I still have it. Can you... Do you have it, like, readily available? I don't have it here. It's uh, not. Yeah, so... Uh, Are you you a mutant? Are you a mutant? uh, I don't know. I don't know how common it is. Well, because like I think like alligators and sharks have two rows of teeth. Maybe you're yeah. you're growing. I'm you're part adal- alligator, adapting. Yeah. What do you think about that, Nate? Well, like, what if you just had like rows of teeth? Like, what if the roof of your mouth was actually just teeth? I'd probably check out at that point. <laughs> probably call it a life and. <laughs> I don't really want to be on a planet where humans <laughs> have more than one row of teeth. So, yikes! That's that's like straight out of a horror movie. So I'm not really interested in that. So I'm gonna pass. Yeah, just gonna. Not a big horror movie guy, huh? Just gonna but... stay in my house, lock the doors, <laughs> never come out. But yeah, I think I'll submit my extra tooth to uh, the NB Sports Hall of Fame, <laughs> yeah, specifically the Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. Is there like a dentist museum? There probably is somewhere. Probably. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, you could you can submit it to Science East. <laughs> yeah, they'll take it. Yeah. Okay. They'll call it a fossil. They'll call it a oh, fossil. Oh my word. Do you guys like horror movies? Does anybody like horror movies? No. No, not really. I hate not them. Particularly. I hate them. 
Girls like them. Girls like them. Yeah, Brit- Brittany loves them. Loves them. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, I don't. I don't. All right, so we we don't like horror movies. Uh, What's next? Consensus. Moving on, Greg. It's your story. That's me. Okay, so I'm gonna actually ask my question before I read my article. So, what is the weirdest, like not most disgusting, but just like completely weird, um, sandwich combo that you can think of or that you've eaten before and really liked? So So let's start with Peter. Okay, so. There's this famous story in my family of this one time when I was in kindergarten and I went to school and I must have had like just regular things for a kid to take for lunches, like a sandwich and snacks like fruit or Oreos or whatever. Anyway, I, it must have been a pepperoni sandwich and Oreos. And I came home and com- and, and was crying to my mom. I was like, mom, the kids at school are making fun of me. Like, well, it was so they were so rude. They were making fun of my food and they were calling me weird and everything. Because I had literally taken an Oreo, licked out the icing, put a slice of pepperoni in, closed it up, and eaten it at school. <laughs> Come on. And my parents were like, well, Peter, because that's weird. That's why you're getting made fun of, because that's weird. And I was just like, apparently I was heartbroken that they were all making fun of me. And um, that's <laughs> that's it. So <laughs> that's an odd combination that I came up with. Um, I... I couldn't couldn't think of a weird sandwich that I I'd have or I've oh my gosh I can't speak I've had, um, but that I guess I've had that so um that counts, Oreos yeah. and pepperoni. I've always had pretty good taste in food so I don't really have anything <laughs> weird but okay yeah but being me I was like you know what, you know what's good for this a quick Google search. And, of course, the trusty Google search came up quickly with my favorite news network. Everyone's if you, if you If you want to call it that. If you want to call it news, we can call it news. <laughs> BuzzFeed News has a great article called, you know what it's called? What's it called? Feast your eyes on the weirdest sandwiches ever. Feast and you know what's funny? You know when you in the URL, the, the URL it says... <laughs> Buzzfeed.com backslash hello weird sandwiches, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with the link? For- <laughs> this is Buzzfeed, man. Okay, so I- I'm just gonna pick one out. I- I'm not gonna go through all of them. The the weirdest one that I saw was uh, coming in at number 17. I don't know if they actually ranked them or it was just one. Probably two, you not. know what I mean? Just like a. Anyways, it's peanut butter, mayonnaise, bananas, and pickles on whole wheat bread. So I've heard of peanut butter uh, banana sandwich. I don't oh, know if you guys I, have heard of that. I have peanut butter banana sandwich. That's not weird. It's when you do mayonnaise and pickles. But, now we're but talking. But you know what? If you had a sandwich that was just mayonnaise and pickles, I feel like that's not as, like, that's not that No, people do that. Off. Or well, oh, they'll do, like, a cucumber. Yeah. See, all I would need to make that a regular sandwich is add meat, like pickles, mayonnaise, and, like, ham. So or taking out the ham, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Hmm. But... When you add like mayonnaise and peanut butter, the thought of those in the same like s- sandwich. So are are these gross. actual sandwich combinations that are popular somewhere, or is it just like BuzzFeed like making up funny combinations and like no? Rank there's them? like a picture, and then it's like somebody. It's somebody's creation. Like they have people's names underneath. Uh. <laughs> Greg, what's your story? Let's hear the story. Okay. Yes. Back to the reason behind all this. Uh, so basically, McDonald's does uh, this limited and elite run for, I think it was like special members or something, but only in China, where they take elements from Peter's story, uh, being the Oreo, and elements from Nate's sandwich, being the mayonnaise, and add in everyone's favorite lunch meat, Spam. <laughs> <laughs> and the end I have result, never had spam before because it just looks too repulsive for me yeah. to actually let it go into my mouth. And I, I yeah, can't really imagine cool. how bad it would smell. Like you crack open that can and it's just like, ugh. <laughs> basically, this is the monstrosity that they come up with. This we have got to show that picture to the viewers. That it honestly yeah. doesn't look bad. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like the spam looks nicely cooked. It doesn't look like the spam that we have. I think it's, I think yeah. it's, it's got to be different. 
There's got to be different kinds of spam or something like that. But I'm- like reading the rest of the article, it makes me think that they pulled like a Supreme and just was like, you know what? All the McDonald's <laughs> fanboys, they'll buy whatever we put let's, out there. It's just super so exclusive. Let's them. People will buy it. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my weird, wild, and wacky story. That's all McDonald's right. weird. All right. That's burger. it for weird, wild, and wacky stories. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, that's it. We gave you a bit of a shorter, listeners, we gave you a shorter version of weird, wild, and wacky stories. We want to pick out the best stories. And give you refined answers. It's about it's about quality here, not quantity. So last quality. week we realized we may have gone a little bit long. We want a really d- deep. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. I'm not cutting this in the podcast. This is too funny at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we want to give you a, a variety of topics. So I, I'd like to um, listen in. What am I even saying? I would like to go into some you <laughs> articles. <laughs> We were talking about being positive here, Nate. Thank you for bringing the negative energy. You Uh, suck. (laughs) Did you guys hear? um, We want to get into COVID bits is what I've called this little little group of articles and and news. Um, Did you guys hear about the couple that went to the Yukon to get vaccines for COVID? You're an idiot. So let me give you the full-on story because this is actually crazy. So this guy... Uh, was he, he isn't anymore he's now resigned but he was the ceo of a canadian casino company um who i believe has connections to a hotel in the yukon so he chartered a private plane with him and his actress girlfriend and they went to um yukon and they posed as essential workers they claimed that they worked at a nearby motel and they were able to get um covid vaccines and they that's the Cortland Cronk. But this is worse. Like, yeah. this is actually despicable, if you ask me. This is ridiculous. If there is an anti vaccine, we should give these people that. It. Like, like, they do <laughs> okay, not. Okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> Tone it down. No, no, no. I don't, I don't want to make them sick. I just want to take away the immunity that they have. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, they probably didn't get their second dose, so they probably don't have a good immunity. That's true. Anyway. That's true. You're right. They don't have their second dose. But I just thought that this is absolutely just despicable. Because people... they got them at the airport, didn't they? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember. I read their article earlier in the week, but, um, yeah, I think you're right. It was a mobile vaccination clinic. So it's, so did they get arrested or fined or what? They got fined. They didn't even get arrested. Yeah. I think that there's potentially more stuff coming down the pipeline about what's going to happen to them, but there's been a lot of public outrage about this and these people are, are clearly, gonna have trouble finding jobs or or anything like that for a while i'd say um shame on you shame on you both the other thing that's interesting is the johnson and johnson um vaccine is now in the end of its clinical trials and it's going to be coming to market soon the the problem is is well the good thing i guess i should say first is that it's a single dose so um that's much better than having two doses in the moderna vaccine or in the uh What's the other one called? Uh, Pfizer. Pfizer. Pfizer BioNTech. Yeah, that's right. Um, so the thing about the Johnson & Johnson one is it's only 66% effective so far. Um, and it's potentially less effective against the new strains of COVID in South Africa. So I think it's uh, number B117 or whatever is the COVID strain. It's super, super infective. Uh, in Infective. Yes, that's the word. Gosh. Um, and they're saying that um, they might try a second dose of the Johnson & Johnson one to see if it makes it even more um, effective. But hopefully that's coming to market soon. And then the other one is the Novavax vaccine is potentially coming to market soon. It shows 89% effect, uh, effectiveness in the UK trials. Um, it's also potentially less effective against new strains. And it is a double dose, I believe, although I'm not sure. But I just thought that's some interesting news about COVID. Do you guys have anything else interesting that's happened about COVID or anything personally about you with COVID over the last little bit? I just I just wanted to mention that um, just to make sure we spread actual facts. Hmm. Um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is 66% effective at preventing moderate to severe illness and much more pro- protective. Uh, again, it's 85% against the most serious symptoms. Mm. And if we can get into a place where 85% of people, 
people just have moderate, right? Yes. That's we're in a much better off situation. And because that's to, yeah. we're not flooding emergency rooms and it just yeah. it's it's so much better. We don't have healthcare workers that are overworked and all that. Um the yeah. the other thing um that I was gonna say, um I've completely forgotten. So <laughs> nice. And one of the I think that uh it's important to note that one of the biggest difference with this one and why we probably will see uh the the eff efficacy sorry that's a hard word to say sometimes it is a uh, difficult one is it's a different type of vaccine uh compared to the so the two ones that are out now are both a very new wave of vaccines and mm -hmm. it's actually really cool with the uh mrna and what they've created but the the one that the johnson and johnson are using i believe is a more classic situation like a traditional it's, vaccine where they actually give you a little bit of the virus right yeah okay yeah i, yeah. I believe so I, i'm i'm like low-key trying to just make sure i'm not putting any i'm just I, i'm i'm pretty excited that vaccines are going to be readily available coming soon and it's really cool that like humans have never done this before like we've like the fastest that we've ever developed a vaccine before is in like five years or whatever, but it's just super cool that like it's been just over a year since coronavirus appeared in China. Um, it was mm. the end of December, 2019, uh, 2019. Yes. 2019. Yeah. And like we've had, we've been living here in North America in about a year of the pandemic, pretty close. Um, it's been like a threat for about a year and it's just, really cool to think that we've like adapted to this and the science is really actually just one so um hopefully we'll we'll see a lot more of, of vaccines like out in the wild and uh, available for people readily available and hopefully distribution will go well and everything but i know that since joe biden's taking over that's a big change in the united states and hopefully we'll see positive uh, ripples from from that here in canada too mm. but what do you think yeah. about the the vaccine greg I think it's good, and anti-vaxxers can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're uh, not even going down that, that road. Yeah, yeah, we're not. Yeah, I'm not. I I will not talk to them. They have yeah. no place in my brain and my conversation. Yeah, just, um, I just wanted to just a quick fact, just for people like concern mm. about these rates. It 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 says a stat here: the efficacy rates of. Uh, the flu vaccine, which comes out every fall, which we've been using for years, and it's provided effective for for us as as a society. It's it has a forty to sixty percent. So, it's just to tell you that when they came out with these vaccine rates, when Moderna and Pfizer and BioNTech came out with these crazy ninety four and ninety five vaccine rates it's not crazy because there are other vaccines that i'm sure have rates that good mm -hmm. it just it's just a reminder that like we can still use an efficacy rate that is smaller and mm. it'll still bring us closer and closer to that immune heredity right so immune so, heredity <laughs> what did i just <laughs> you said immune heredity herd immunity <laughs> Herd immunity. Herd immunity. You yeah. better. There you go. Yeah. The, the other thing that I think um, is... That's oh really funny. Gosh, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not my sharpest tonight, guys. I'm herd so immunity. sorry. I, I have no clue what I was going to say. Herd immunity. Herd immunity. Herd. No, I have to say it like 10 times now because I screwed it up and I keep going back to the other one. Herd immunity. immunity herd. That was a funny screw up. Immune heredity. That's funny. Immune heredity. <laughs> Immune did you heard immune. about did you heard a D about the moon <laughs> oh okay what i was gonna say was that um it's pretty cool that we have the high efficacy rates against covid like in the vaccines but it's also something to consider that we're also doing now as opposed to like the, the flu which yes covid has much worse symptoms than the flu it can it can do a lot more permanent damage than the flu can but mm. um so we're taking it more seriously but the other thing is, is that we're just washing our hands more. We are not being yeah. around people more. We're wearing masks. We're being, we're sanitizing surfaces. We're being much more conscious. And so if, if once we get past COVID, if people continue these habits, 
even at a scaled down version, even if you just carry hand sanitizer with you, like, and, and sanitize and maybe wear a mask when you go some places, like really high yeah, traffic wear a places. mask when you're sick. Or, yeah, or when you're sick, that's right. Um, if you just even do that, like, cold. It, stuff's going to spread a lot less. And I heard, again, I don't know where I heard this from, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's true, is that um, flu numbers this year have been way down. Um, yeah, they, they have. Because people are just wearing masks and, and doing all things to combat COVID. And at the same time, that combats the flu. So um, I hope that we continue these some, some of these things. I don't want to not be able to go to a live sports game or not be able to go to a concert and not be able to visit my friends and family. But it'd be really cool if we can continue some of these things. Like, it's not that inconvenient to wear a mask when you go some places, especially if you're sick, I think. so. Yeah. I and if that's not agree. enough evidence for you that the stuff is working, then... <laughs> I don't know what is. Greg, you forgot though. Q said not to wear a mask. <laughs> okay. Just sack. Okay, bye, Nate. <laughs> Welcome to Real Hours with PJ and Greg. <laughs> Nate is no longer. Yeah, let's do a segment with our masks on. I'm going to go my mask. Are we actually? Just, just had to plug myself back in. Just had to plug myself back in. Listen here, folks. I wear this mask not because I think <laughs> I'm smarter than anyone else. I wear this, and, I, and I'm not falling into some Come government on. scheme. I wear this mask because I care about people in my lives. I have people in my lives that have, that have problems in their life that they don't have to explain to you for the reason that they need oh. to wear a mask and they need to be protected from COVID. But if you can't get that... Anyways, sorry, I just... <laughs> no, it's everybody's right to be... Like, if you're immunocompromised, it's your right to... Yeah, they have the right to not want to die. Yeah. And they want to be mm -hmm. protected, so... And to ask you politely to wear a mask. And yeah. if you aren't wearing a mask, stop listening to Real Hours. <laughs> I'm willing to let you go as a listener. I'm I don't pretty care. sure they already stopped. I'm willing to let you go <laughs> as a listener. say that much. I'm pretty sure they already stopped listening at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They stopped listening a long time ago. Probably. So welcome all my mask wearing, sanitizing friends. friends. COVID is real, and that's just about it. We'll we'll move on. We that's it for COVID bits. Yeah. That's we, it. <laughs> rant you need aside. A second to cool down, Nate. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm about to start ranting about rich people now. <laughs> yes, yes. Just a twenty year old. Just just going at him. So you're you're leading into what the next topic is which is talking about the absolute stock market shenanigans that are going on the financial guru big, Nate. just a straight up right out of the gate here we're just gonna big hand what for happened? my friends on oh. reddit and just r slash wall street we, bets we, we, we did it play the yay click clip right there just for them because yeah you you are if you need if you if you lost money enough money that you're in a pinch come on by i'll hook you up with some food we'll get you we got an extra bed at my house we'll hook you up <laughs> you can hang I sleep for 14 days so basically all right we had some friends some great friends that were on reddit the the, the reddit world has taken to um trying to stick it to the man basically the walls the Wall Street man, if you will. I don't know who the specific man is. There has been names mentioned, but... So basically, the stock market, there's this thing that people do at the stock market and, and on Wall Street is they... Uh, what's the term? Give short. me the term. They short, short stocks. Sh they short stocks. So basically, what they'll do is they're, they'll borrow a stock and then they will sell that stock and then they'll buy it back for less. And then they've made a profit, and they'll give it back to the the person they borrowed it from. So, for like, like, let's make an example for all the listeners who have a hard time grasping this, yep. like I do. Um, Greg, yeah, you have um, you have an apple that's worth ten dollars. Okay, yes. <laughs> you I'm give it. You, let uh, you borrow you, my apple. You let me borrow the said apple, and and I know that this bat this apple is going to lose value um, over the next however long. So I sell it as soon as I get it to Nate for $10 because that's what it's worth. And um, then I buy another apple 
later when once the the stock is dropped in value for five dollars and i give it back to you and that's i've replaced what i took away from you I but i've also gained apple five dollars myself what'd you say i still get my apple back you and still you get, get five dollars that's right nate right. is the real loser so exactly that's somebody been still loses for a long time because people like people who run the stock market rich dudes in suits and females i'm sure but they've been stealing from not stealing why can you borrow a stock that's the stupidest playing, thing ever playing how, the system the, how can the, you why is that okay yeah. to borrow a stock they're playing games with like stocks and it's dumb and it's yeah stupid. companies that are doing poorly I, they're I'm, preying on them i'm, yeah. I'm all you know what though and I'm, it's gambling I'm, I'm all for it if it's allowed which is allowed but the problem is is that you shouldn't be able to borrow stocks if you're allowed to do that and that's a way to make money I honestly don't have a problem with it. If it's totally legal and they're they're just doing what is there and what's allowed for them, then that's I I don't have a problem with that. But the fact that it's allowed, the fact that you're allowed to borrow stocks, just shouldn't yeah. be a thing. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. That's what I was. I I felt the same way. I was like, because it is a. I think a lot of us have learned something we didn't know. Like mm -hmm. I don't think most yeah. of us knew what this was before this all went down, but. I just don't understand why somebody should be allowed to borrow a stock, like you said, to go, because somebody always loses, and that's, and I don't know why somebody has to always lose. Like, why don't we just not play this type of game? But here they are playing this game. So basically, we had some redditors, redditors, <laughs> Reddit users, uh, who decided they were going to stick it to the man, and they were going to, uh, basically inflate the price of a game stock the GameStop's uh, shares. Because mm -hmm. GameStop is losing value because of the pandemic. People can't go to the malls. And people well, are just buying online You games. just buy it online. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I I listened to a fella, and he basically said, they're, they're the next blockbuster. Like, they're, it, they won't, yeah. there won't be long until they're at a... So it, it is a really dying industry because people will just buy it on, on own. Especially right now, the PS5, they have a digital version. Yeah. Where you don't, has one too. where you can't even go to GameStop and buy. You have to, you have to buy it online, and you have to have enough download. storage for it. So it's like, yeah, it's a dying market. But these guys, they decided, and people have been playing games with dying markets and stuff like that. That's what they do. They know that the price is going to go down, so they're they're buying it at the price and waiting for it to to go down, and then they're buying it back. Right, they're selling it, and then they're buying it back at a the lower rate as it continues to drop and so these reddit users they all started buying the gamestop stocks and it shot the price of that's what happens right when people start when people find worth in a stock it, because people are buying it it becomes worth more it's kind of like a sl supply and demand kind of thing almost mm -hmm. so yeah so basically they caused an inflation on the gamestop shares and so people lost out. I think there was numbers talked about, like, people that were in this, like, it was in the billions. Like, people say they've lost billions. Uh, usually, I think there's actually f whole companies built on doing this, not just, like, one person doing it. It's, like, whole companies are doing hedge this funds. whole, yeah, hedge funds that are doing this gambling. I call it gambling. I believe it's gambling. I think the stock markets in general are kind of gambling. I prefer to invest my money in mutual funds and in real estate just saying for all our listeners out there i if you're if you're in in my ballpark of like living in like middle class don't put your money in stock markets it's not it's not a good idea that's high my risk. opinion it's high risk high reward is the thing it's, if you can yeah. play it right yeah it works out great for you but but yeah. just the, the but risk about, factors yeah and if you don't have that spare money w why would you need to do something so high risk there's anyways so yeah, there's a lot of people that, and mostly a lot of people that are rich that have lost out, and there's a lot of people that have made money off of it who, Reddit users who don't have like any experience, and it's happening. So it's kind of blown up. It's happening with more than just GameStop too. It's happened with a uh, movie theater chain AMC, and I believe there's even a couple other things. I I don't remember them all, but I saw them. So it's pretty yeah. interesting. It's it it is quite interesting, and and to the point where. Well, we talked. We were talking before, and there, there's an, there's a, 
the big thing now, and, and more people are getting into the stock market, and it's becoming an interesting industry because a lot of apps are making it very easy for people like me and you guys and anyone, like any middle class or, you know, they can buy a stock quite easily now just yep. through their phone. Like uh, there's tons of them out there. Well, simple, Robinhood, any of those. Yeah. And so we talked about how Robinhood. Yeah, this, this is wild. Stopped. Uh, you can sell the stock, but you can't buy the stock. I think th I think they limited it. I think you can buy a certain amount, but you can't buy more than like a little bit. Yeah. But Robinhood, the the trading app, which is accessible to anyone, literally stopped you from from being able to buy GameStop stuff, so that you so that they can stop people from um, screwing over the people who are shorting the stocks. So it's it's. Uh, I was talking with my brother about it, and he's like, it's a big conspiracy. And I said, it's it's not a conspiracy because it's actually happening, and we're not, like, coming up with something fake. But it, it's kind of true because, like, like Robinhood is literally stopping people from making money, stopping people from doing what the free market From my all understanding, about. hedge funds can still buy it. Yes. So it's it's people in the app, like you yeah, and I, individual are being users blocked. Because people were banding together with social media. From the free market. Yes. From the free market. Yep. That those big, rich, white guys, I love the free market, but as soon as it affects them, let's block them. Do and, you really and, believe in the free market, or do you believe in being super rich free and when it not letting you. the poor end up with money? Free when it benefits you. Yeah. But the other thing that's, that's pretty wild about the story is that Robin Hood was getting a bunch of negative reviews on on uh, the Google Play Store as a result, um, and on the App Store as well. But Google, um, it was found that the Google was removing hundreds of thousands of one star reviews from the yeah. app on the I'm Play Store. I'm coming for you now, Google. So that people could <laughs> know that Robin Hood yourself. was so bad. You aligned yourself, Google, with well, they are yeah, they are the rich white giant, anyways, right? Yeah. So Google likes to Google likes to. Like they look, you know, all happy, like playful, like all that neutral, whatever. But I don't know. Like once you make some, once you do something like this, like it's just, I, uh, it's not does not look good opinions. on them. Changes it does a lot of not, people's opinions. It does not look good on at them. all. You've at aligned all. yourself with, in my opinion, the wrong side. It's what can I say? What can I say? Hey, it makes for a great podcast and great stories, honestly. I've I've watched multiple YouTube videos, been all yeah. over Twitter about this, reading articles. Like it's it's and I read the same thing every time pretty much, but it's still interesting. Uh, well, you all I find what happens is you get one everything is like, "Oh yeah, I get that now. I've got that." But there's like that piece that that they say that the last person yeah. didn't say, you know, if it's an article or something like that. So it's quite interesting to to write I've been up learning on lots about the stock yeah. market in the past like two days. I yeah I, I yeah I would just you can learn lots about it, but I'd be very weary in getting into it, especially if you're yeah. I it's just like I said, I put my funds in something like real estate before, and I get that. And when I say that, I I. I do a lot, like I watch a lot of, po or I listen to like some podcasts and like financial podcasts and, and different. So I'm not just like some random person. To, like I have some backup for that. Like I can. Some. Some. <laughs> uh, Greg, you watched a, you watched a video about the, the shorting and all the game stuff, stuff GameStop yeah. stuff. Do you have any insights to add? Anything interesting? Anything you're, you care about personally? Um, I mean, it's just people taking advantage of the system and then getting upset when <laughs> the system works against them. Because but that's, that's the thing is they've been doing it like unnoticed for so long, right? And yeah. then when a bunch of individual users band together, band together, like they made something happen and they really screwed it over the other people. And it's just well, and they're it's like hypocrisy. asking the authorities to get involved. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's just Sorry, people such... bought stocks. Where was the law broken there? Yeah. Oh, wait. And it's such sweet justice when oh. they use the exact system that they're use taking advantage of to, like, screw them over. It's great. It's wild. 
that's probably enough stock market talk for for you, the yeah. listener. I would for say. a couple yeah. guys who don't know anything about it. From from well, no, I Nate, think we Nate's know more somebody. Than... Nate knows stuff. Yeah, we talk about. Yeah. I know everything now. <laughs> Next, I'll tell you why you should never get into Bitcoin because that's just a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> Bitcoin talk with Nate. We'll get into that one. <laughs> it's a whole separate podcast. We're just starting yeah. Bitcoin talk. <laughs> yeah. There is a there's a cryptocurrency. It's like the second most successful cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. It's called Dogecoin. Have you guys heard about this? Doge what, you know, you remember the yeah. dog like meme where it's like Doge? Yeah. Yeah. Very it's, cool. It's that's what it is. It's Dogecoin. Anyway, that's enough. Um, I have one thing here that I would like to bring up before we close the podcast. I don't know if we have anything else to add after this or where we'll go. Who knows if we have enough time to to get this thing going, but this article is quite interesting. Craft Dinner releases limited edition pink candy KD for Valentine's Day. So I saw this while scrolling on Twitter, and it's basically regular KD, but it's pink, um, which is so strange, and it has a hint of a candy taste in it. So I'm not sure if that's like cinnamon candy or if it's like extra sweet or something like that. I'm not sure, um, but... They said that you can get your hands on it as a as a um, individual KD fan or whatever. Um, and the quote was in in the tweet: uh, "Sweet talk us below with a one liner or love note, and you could get a free box." And they're doing this until February first. Um, so I believe that's next Monday, maybe. I'm not sure. But Greg, when I brought this up to you, uh, to you guys in the our group chat, you were like. Why is it only KD simps in the in the Twitter replies? And I, and, and I thought about this and I was like, you know why? It's because only a KD simp would actually follow the Craft Dinner Twitter account. Yeah. Like who else? Don't get me started. I hate <laughs> KD. It's so gross. Just saying. Um, Craft Dinner is something that I've always had in my house. Um, yeah. It's just it's like a classic. It's just like you know. Um, but when it, you can have real mac and cheese. Do you know yeah, what? Yeah, but though? that's the point. My you have it when you don't want to make us real mac and, cheese. mac and cheese. Mom doesn't like mac and cheese, so she never made it. So you know, I just fun fact. Not that long ago, I I mean, unfortunately, she wasn't able to have it because um, we weren't allowed to see each other yet. But I'll probably make it for her soon. But I I like when I make food because Jilly is gluten free and dairy free. I as I learn to make more foods in life, I want to like incorporate the the ability to make whatever I make gluten-free and dairy-free yeah even when she's not there so that next time you're I just know, used to it yeah i made a really good it, it was based off do you guys know mass town market in uh yeah that's on your way day. yeah they have like a famous uh mac and cheese and i made it, it had, i used chickpea noodles which are actually a really good substitute for hmm. and they're a lot healthier and they got a lot less carbs fun fact Anyways, and I made it with almond milk and, and like, so everything, gluten-free, dairy-free, it was phenomenal. Like, you, could, it was definitely different, but anyways, go back to your mom never made you. I'm sorry. Oh, mom just, just never made uh, mac and cheese for us, so I always had uh, just craft dinner, and uh, that was just classic boys' meal. If dad was making supper, he'd just make craft dinner, so yes. um, uh, as as a as a result of this question, the sweet talk us below with a one liner or a love note, and you get a free box. I commissioned Greg to come up with some of his sweetest one liners and his best um, sweet talk, um, his <laughs> his pickup lines, whatever. What kind of what kind of music are we going to put under these pickup oh, lines? As he says, something the saxophone, yeah. definitely. Yes. Saxophone oh yeah, sure, yeah, yes. Mazzy. That is so good. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, and the stand up bass. Oh. Okay, all right. <laughs> Saxophone. Right. Turn down Take the lights away. wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lock the doors and turn the lights some, down. Light low. some candles. Just yeah. the music's kicked in. Ease back. Don't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Knees Just back. Keep, keep in mind that, that Greg is a married man. So I was about to say that. Greg is a married man. So he's not actually on the market, but <laughs> no. picture that person you want. Picture yes. what Greg's saying, except coming out of the mouth of your crush. Okay, your and Valentine. You can, hey, you can use these pickup lines. These are public domain. I just decided, these, and and Greg, these are no longer the intellectual property. This is relationship of Greg. advice with real hours. Come on. I'll yes. be honest. Come on. I'll be honest. Most of these are not intellectual property of Greg oh. to begin with. So that's fine. No one needs to know. No one needs yeah, to know. We'll cut that they part out. They're not like copyrighted. Like, is that a thing? No. Okay, wait. No, no, don't worry about it. Sorry, lights right, off. 
down low. Yeah. Close the yeah. curtains. Set the mood. Say it right. as seductively as you can, Put on something red. <laughs> put on something red. Put on your fine dress. Put on your me undies. Yeah, yeah, your Valentine. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Your Valentine me undies. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna play the saxophone behind this. Just. Hey, girl. Did you just come from the creamery? Because you are looking Gouda. <laughs> I'm just what? picturing the setting. <laughs> You're in like a fancy Italian restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your date says, Why prove alone when we can prove together? <laughs> That's the best one. That's the best one. No no no, don't don't go on to the next one yet. We need to dissect the situation behind <laughs> these and like analyze. So you're we should we should set up a co- a conversation. Right. Greg, you're gonna be the man hit, hitting the uh, the pickup line, and I'll, I'll be the female. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wait a second. How's that? Do I sound female? <laughs> you didn't need the uh, voice modifier, Peter. Hey. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, this is Nate. Nate. You're you're the father, and I'm the young daughter, and, and Greg is asking your permission to take me out. Okay, so this is this is Greg with the next joke. And Peter, is this your fantasy? Is this your dream? <laughs> 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 There's gonna be okay. a weird voice on me for a minute. Oh, my God. oh. give us the next one. Okay. Um. <laughs> I love your permission par- parmesan to take you out tonight. <laughs> that one doesn't really work. It looks good on paper. It looks much better on paper. Yeah, cuz you can say it in your head and be like, "Oh, parmesan." Yeah, you can like send a, a letter to somebody. Parmesan. That's the one to put in the sen- in, in the yeah. letter. It makes yeah. much more sense. And then finally, you must be blue cheese because I like the way you're dressing. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you could use that one for, uh, for uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner too, or something like that. Although I don't think it would be taken very well if you say you must be a Thanksgiving dinner. That's like, oh yeah, yeah. Don't call yeah. someone a Thanksgiving dinner. That's okay. a little much. Um, so, what's up? Bonnie? I mentioned me undies. I just want to oh, give a yeah, quick yeah, yeah. update. I've been tracking yes. them. Tracking They're coming them. from basically the opposite side of north america like los down angeles? all the way to the bottom yeah i think it's los angeles i guess not <laughs> quite the bottom but you know what i mean like about as far away as it can be for, from a big so it's probably gonna take a while they they were they were it was 10 days ago so oh you know and it's oh, probably God. i think it's a uh, usps which means oh. it'll be canada post Ooh. so it'll be I, it'll be listen, forever we can't hate on yeah. them because they are the they are the public whatever mail service whatever they're very important but they're not as good as fedex and ups yeah exactly yeah. so yeah that i can't wait to share those on the pod that that'll be great so are we gonna get like a mo- some modeling or what, what's the deal there? i hope so more i don't know like music will we get restricted on youtube <laughs> we're on youtube hey that's right hey it depends maybe, on how much get, we show maybe if we get so many views or so many on youtube you or so many subscribers <laughs> yeah how many subscribers well, are we getting right the now? extra Two? long I'm getting the extra long brief boxers so they'll basically be like tight underwear yeah or it's tight shorts tight tight shorts no what they we are do, tight underwear but I think we should set up a patreon and only only fans only fans <laughs> <laughs> only no. Fans. <laughs> no patreon but only like the top tier gets to see Nate's uh you picks Mindy's modeling picks Update on my uh, being healthy. Eight pounds down, folks. Let's go. So, yeah. Come on, big fella. Hey. Yeah. Hooray. That's that's Just what awesome. I say. Everyone's journey is different, and whatever you're trying to do to make yourself healthier, keep going. And Self care. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we have one more thing that I just remembered that we didn't put in our doc. Well, you 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 bring that up. I just want to say, Greg, what have you been doing for self care? Have you been exercising? You've been you running, walking, anything? That's a good question. 
I think reading, because like I used to never intellectual self care. Yeah, I used to never read for pleasure, but like it was probably. I think it was like December twenty nineteen. I really started to like read almost every day for just for fun because it is fun. fun. Yeah, I lost that. I lost that too. I started reading. I always try to get back into reading because I I. I like it when I do it, but I just don't value it enough that I give it enough time. So that's important to me. But I've also been and trying to get out and do little runs and walks because I don't get enough. I don't get out enough now that we're all stuck inside. If you have outdoor space available to you, please take advantage of it. Don't take that for granted. That's so important. Like if you live in a city, maybe it's different where you're locked down or whatever. But if you have outdoor space available to you, please take advantage of it. Like with climate change and everything, you just don't know. Like take advantage True. of it. Yeah, you yeah. take advantage of it. Okay, Nate. Okay, we have to do uh, producer Greg sports picks because the Super Bowl. Because oh, yes. we should go up. We should go over what o- occurred because we both games are now over. That's right. And they were both pretty great, honestly. I, I found them so. both. I found them both quite entertaining. So especially when. Um, that onside kick happened. Oh I yes, was... yeah, that one. <laughs> <You're> like, just... <laughs> okay, so, there was so... there was um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, the games, the games, like there was eh, some like things where it was like the, going for a field goal, like Aaron Rodgers not riding in, like there's things. But at the end of yeah. the day, good football, and we have a sweet matchup for the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it, like, well, it's basically come on. it's basically the new era versus the present not slash even old, I old wouldn't slash say, present versus present slash new yeah it's hard to say they're yeah they're on such same levels almost of like where they're at like even though tom brady's so old he's not playing any less so anyway and he's you, the you know what i'm saying by far, yeah so. you, you know what i'm saying when yep. i say that so, so anyways yeah what we were the got, picks last last so week greg had the bills Yep, and yep. I had the Chiefs, the so Nate I wins. won that. And and, and then you we had both... the Chiefs. I think it was minus three and a half, and the Chiefs won by by far. So but you you got that for sure. Yeah, and then I had Tampa Bay, and he had Tampa Bay too. So we both picked the upset. So okay. We both got it right. So I never pictured. It's funny. A lot of people are like, "Wow, that's an upset." I know that technically is like by ranking, but I never thought it was an upset. And, and Tampa really. Bay actually beat Green Bay earlier in the season as well. So exactly. It's eh, it's hard because because of with with the um the seat the way the seating is in the NFL with divisional rankings it just it's just, well it's and not they were just totally Tampa true. Bay took took some time to get into the yeah. season so they had some losses yeah. when they probably if they were where they are now and they went back they would definitely beat that team you know what yeah. I mean well, so it's a it's a brand new quarterback like that's a big change especially in a year where they don't have training camp so yeah, yeah. um let's let's look at this this way um so so far it's one uh for one for nate and zero for greg because you tied in the other one so it may, maybe we, maybe we call it two one um yeah, sure and the super bowl i'm going to be arbitrary here and say the super bowl is worth two points okay so, so takes if nate all. gets a super bowl pick wrong and greg gets it right then greg can still win yes okay so i like it so I don't know what the betting line said. Do you know what the which betting line said? Or do you want to just means pick the... he has to pick the different team. He does. Yes. Um, or I get to f- take first pick. Yes. But then Nate can just automatically win by picking the same thing. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> okay. Nate picks first. And whatever one he doesn't pick, then so, I'll take. Nate, give, give us your pick for the Super Bowl. I think that a lot of people are leaning towards the Chiefs. But I would just say, don't sleep on Tom Brady. Don't sleep on the goat because he's, um, he's been the well, underdog before. Since we all spent the entire pregame saying that Josh Allen had somehow was better than Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to tell you, Peter, don't count Patrick Mahomes out because at this point, I'm sorry, I agree, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time, but Patrick Mahomes is on another level. He's got more mobility than Tom Brady has ever had in his career. And the mobility is going to, and it's not just Patrick Mahomes. It's Patrick Mahomes. When you put Patrick Mahomes on the same team as Tyree Kill, as 
same team as Kelsey, and then you put Andy Reid, who will literally do anything he wants. Probably one of the best offensive coaches ever. It's just crazy what the guy will do. <laughs> but so, you bring up a good I point agree. about Josh Allen because the media and, and I don't I know. I could not believe they, they, what they I totally was watching. They totally manufactured the, the storyline that Josh Allen and the Bills are really good. And I, it's just like the Chiefs, the Chiefs are so slept on. They're so slept on. It's because people are bored of them. Like they're just, they're mechanical. They literally have a switch. They can just flick it. And it's like, okay, we are it now going to so go score. I was watching as like a minutes. Chiefs, as a Chiefs fan, I was watching these broadcasts mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I agree. Josh Allen had a great year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, don't, don't like, I'm not, but you're also trying to say that he might've had a better year than Patrick Mahomes or that he's a, Maybe not like talking about like whose year was better, but just who is going to perform. I'm like, and it's more than just Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes. Like it's the rest of the team as well. So exactly when you have Travis Kelsey and Tyree kill on an offense, it's like those guys are just actually automatic. Travis Kelsey had nine receptions for like almost a hundred yards, if not more in the first Well, they half. both, they both had over a yeah. hundred. Yeah. So enough football talk. Anyways, enough, enough football enough talk. Football. Give us Greg, your pick. Give us your pick. I, I'm going chiefs. And I believe that they will, uh, what do you call it when you go back to back? Uh, back to back. They'll go repeat. back to back. Repeat. Repeat. <laughs> okay. So so that means I picked the <laughs> the the other one. What's, <laughs> what's the other one? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Remember they had Tom the, Brady. They had the oh, boat yeah, and the, the skull and the, the pirate. Pirates. And yeah. The and the swords. It, it is interesting <laughs> that that Tampa Bay will be the, like have this home advantage. Well, they're not going to be in their own locker room, right? Because if they're not the home team, because Kansas well, City know, has the better but, record, but they but are they like get at to home. wake up every morning in their so own. So the team isn't traveling. Like the teams aren't traveling. I guess it's only Kansas City until the Friday before the Super Bowl. Normally, oh, wow. they would already be in the city of the Super Bowl because they yeah. have media day that yeah. whole week and yeah. they have training camp that week in the stadium and all that, but. This week or this this year, they're just trying to minimize contact and and travel. So they're they're literally traveling to Tampa Bay from Kansas City on I think the Friday before the Super Bowl. So yeah, it it'll be good. I'm I'm excited. So, I think it's gonna be a good game, either way. Um, very crucial. Do not have a Super Bowl party. Whatever you freaking do, I don't even care if you have the vaccine. Don't do a Super Bowl party. Don't. It's not necessary. Just ride it out. We'll get past it this year. We'll get past it. And next year, you can have the biggest Super Bowl party ever. So, Well, is, I think that's it. Is that it for real, real hours. hours? I think it is. Okay, so we producer Greg's sports picks. Um, yeah. Producer Greg recommends that you pick with, with his um, exquisite knowledge and yep. deep, deep knowledge. He recommends that you pick the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that's what I would recommend as well as a big Tom Brady homer. Um, you know, you during the game Patriot week, fans are really showing who you really are, and you never <laughs> were Patriots fans. You were just Tom Brady simps. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you all last week. Congrats to my Tom Brady for making it to the Super Bowl. There's, I have no, I have no shame. I have no shame. The game started and I, last week against Green Bay, and I was like, you I don't know who I want to in this absolute game. Absolutely, seriously, simp. Listen to this. <laughs> I didn't know who I wanted to in the game. I was like. Hey, it'll be a good football game. I like Aaron Rodgers. He's only got one Super Bowl. He's pretty good. Maybe he should go to the Super Bowl. I, I was thinking I'd maybe cheer for nah, him. And then choke. Tom Brady reeled me right in, right in. There was I, I just couldn't not cheer for him. I had to go <laughs> put on my Pats jersey. And um, that's that. So, all right, let's close it off for the weekend. Um, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Yes, Producer Greg, do you have you. anything to add at the end here? Um. Just stay home. Sanitize your hands. <laughs> Wash your hands. Yeah. Don't touch stay your home. face. Wear Wash a mask. Hands. Stay safe. Amen. Stay healthy. Behave yourself. Get a COVID test if you're sick. And enjoy yeah. the Super Bowl. And don't have a Super Bowl party. Amen. Let's still have enjoy the virtually. Super Bowl. Virtually. That's cool. Yeah. Bye bye, my friends. Follow See us. See you all next week. At Real Hours Pod, wherever you listen to podcasts and yeah. YouTube, Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Google Send Podcasts. Downloading our episodes. Keep downloading our episodes, even if uh, you watch it on YouTube. Yeah, if you have multiple podcast numbers. apps too, also please. 
<laughs> Go on every single podcast app and download it. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for listening. We love you. Catch Bye. you next week. Bye. Bye.